Hey everybody, this is a quick overview of my 168 hour accountability planner for Notion. If you like this template, feel free to duplicate it and put it in your workspace uh, and the link to the description is below and it's completely free, so feel free to take it. So the sole purpose of this planner was for me to replace my to-do list app. I used to use TickTick, but I think they're all the same. They're great apps and they do a great job of capturing tasks. Uh, but at least for me, they didn't help me actually get anything done. So I wanted to create something that would add accountability and reflection that you can't just do with a to-do list app. And I used Notion because Notion is highly customizable and you can do a lot of different things with it. So start with the front page here. Um, when you duplicate this, uh, you'll be brought to this specific page and you'll duplicate this entire page. But there are two databases here. There is a weeks database and there is a task database. I'm going to go into the weeks database. That's where the template is uh, that I'm going to explain. All right, so we're now in the weeks database. Now I have a sample week right here. And I can open that up if I want. But rather than do that, I will actually go to a new week. So I'm going to click on new and there's a template here. So I'm going to click on new and I'm going to click on new week. That's the template. Click on that. And we'll just wait for it to load. You can see the image pops up as well for the template. And we go full screen here on the template. So there's a lot here. I want to kind of walk you through what you would do for a new week. So there's a checklist here. So new week entry, you want to enter a week beginning property. So that is the week beginning property right there. And we'll click here. And today's the 9th, but we're going to go to the 15th because that's a brand new week, Monday through Sunday. So click there. And that just really helps uh, auto fill the agenda that's going to be here. And it's a board week view, Monday through Sunday. So that just helps with that. So we'll just tick that and then we'll enter the title. So I like to name my weeks by the number. So we'll do week eight. That is the number of weeks we were in for 2021. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll favorite this planner. So for the week, I'll favorite so I can get to it really quickly. So in Notion, you can go up here to favorite and that's it. You have it favorite and it's on the top of your uh, dashboard. All right, so then we will go down here and we'll do a couple things. We're preparing for next week and adding tasks. That's the next step. We're gonna go ahead and review our inbox and that could be a lot of different things. It could be paper notes. It could be your mobile app, anything in your head. You wanna consolidate those and, and put those into one space. Um, hopefully into Notion here in the Notion task list, but it could also be in a to-do list app. Um, I used to use TickTick and I still still have tasks in there. The nice thing about Notion is you can take any web app and you can embed it in within Notion. If you log in, um, you can get the specific tasks uh, from that app. So mine here is loading here. So you can see I have some overdue tasks here and I can think about these and add them to my weeks and the tasks can go within into specific days. So I'll just hide this, toggle, toggle it off. Uh, so we'll do that. Next, you want to think about your, your calendar. Obviously, if you have a lot of things happening, events happening, you may need to uh, go with less things to do this upcoming week. But I like to think about the next two weeks, look at what is coming up. This may generate some new tasks that you need to perform before an event approaches. So just think about how busy you are, how slow you are. If, you're, if, it's a, if it's a slow week, maybe you can do more productive work. So look at your calendar. And then you want to review your Notion task list and write out the next physical task. And if you're a fan of David Allen, he's all about the next physical action. I have a little small template within these tasks that you could uh, hit and it'll tell you what to do next in terms of what's the next physical action. And then you'll add those tasks into this specific week, week eight, by 
using the assign to property. That's a relational property. So here is our database. So you can see we have a bunch of different tasks. We have inbox zero, we have do laundry, we have book flight, haircut. Some of these have already been assigned to my week one. And that's where they'll show up. But we're in week eight right now. So if we did clean bathroom, you can go to assign two, click here. And this will go into week eight here. You can see week eight, I can press the plus button there. And now it is up here in Wednesday. Now the cool thing is I can drag this over and that's the 18th. This is the 19th, so you could quickly move your tasks around. If Monday gets busy or Tuesday gets busy, you can drag it around. And you'll do that with all the different tasks that you have in this database, or you could plug something in here and type it out. Okay, so you'll add your tasks. If you have any recurring tasks, you can also put this in Agenda, and Notion has the ability to just um, keep some extra recurring tasks. Um, this toggle here, I put a couple things here, digital admin, so I could say, okay, I want to input my saving rate and my net worth uh, this week. So I can drag this over, I can put that in there, and boom, I have it in there. If I want to add something to it specifically, I can type it here. I have my next physical task, so I can click on there and that will open up what the next physical task is to perform um, this specific task. Especially when you don't have clarity on the task, you are less likely to do it. So I like to um, take 10 seconds and think about what the next single next action is for this task. All right, recurring tasks, and then yeah, you're gonna move your tasks into different days across, across the days and adjust throughout the week if needed. Things come up, you'll adjust, which is which is awesome. The next big part of the template here is critical tasks. You wanna think about what is your most critical task or focus for the week. It can be so easy to do, It's so, it could be so easy to just do some mundane tasks, small tasks, and not get your big scary stuff done. So I like to ask a couple of questions. What single task completed this week would make you feel the most accomplished, what one thing done would make everything else feel easier, what tasks am I most scared of doing, the one giving me butterflies, and where will most of my energy go this week, and what is life calling me to do? So I like to think about those questions and then put something up here, and I like to promptly put it up what my critical task is, and you can type that in there, and if you, want, if you have a secondary task, you want to put that over here. I like to keep it at one critical and one secondary, just so I don't muddy the water when it comes to what is the most important thing to do this week. And then I have a spend less time doing these things. So what you don't do determines what you can do. So avoiding watching YouTube videos, things that will prevent me from doing my critical tasks or any of the other things I wanna get done this week. And then once you're done, and this is the big important thing, is you can never move anything to next week. You have to hold yourself accountable. So after the week's over, so for me it's Sundays, I like to go and do my what's called a weekly review at the end. Um, and I like, I like to ask, did I get my most critical task completed? If yes, I want to know why I got it completed. Was I motivated? Was there social pressure? Was I ambitious? And if I didn't, what prevented me? Was I too busy? Was this the task I wanted to perform too difficult? I didn't know where to begin. Was I scared of it? And then what actions can I take or tactics can I take next week to get those done? So you want to write that down. Again, get to the psychology of why you're not doing something I think is really important. And then you can review all the tasks that you did complete this week. And uh, we haven't done them yet, but there's a checkbox here. You can look at all the tasks you've completed. I think sometimes we forget about how productive we actually are. So it's good to think about that. And I like to do note noteworthy highlights, reflect on what was accomplished, um, task related or just the week in general, and then difficulties. What did you struggle with during the week? Embrace your failures, you know, learn from your mistakes. If you weren't productive, figure out why that is and, and learn from it. 
And then I like to do a effectiveness scale, a rating on how effective I was for the week. And I have a scale here. It's anchored here as descriptors. So if I complete my critical tasks and my secondary task and most of my, of my other tasks, I get a five. But if I don't complete my critical tasks, I can only, um, I can't get anything above a three. So that's, that's kind of the, the weight is on the critical tasks. Um, so this isn't the scale I use. You could obviously modify to you, but again, you want to hold yourself accountable. And I think getting, giving yourself a rating is important. And that rating is going to go all the way over here. And you could type in, you got, gave yourself a four this week. And if I go back out, you could see I gave myself a four. And this could be, you know, the entire year, weeks one through 52. And you can give yourself a rating and it can average out here. Um, to see if you're heading in the right direction, if this is working for you. So that's the template. There's a link below to my blog, yournexthabit.com, if you want to read more about this accountability planner. And feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Thanks for watching.